Greetings, I'm Victor from Virtual Flight Training. Today we will learn how to deal with the single engine failure on the MI8 MTV2. Quite a few videos have been created about the auto rotation on different helicopters in real life as well as in the simulations such as X-Plane or DCS. The auto rotation is an interesting topic, however, on a twin engine helicopter such as the MI8, you should also be able to deal with a single engine failure. The remaining engine will allow you to continue your flight for a few more minutes, look for a suitable spot and perform a landing. Knowing the procedure by heart will drastically increase your survivability on civil missions as well as on combat sortie. Today's turbine engines such as the TV3117VM on the MTV5 are very reliable when properly maintained and operated. The main reasons for engine failure are internal damage of mechanical parts such as the turbine, oil leaks, problems with the fuel pumps or contaminated fuel, external factors such as precipitation, icing, bird strikes or volcanic ash, as well as damage by shrapnel or gunfire. The engine failure will announce itself with uncommanded right yaw, engine RPM and turbine inlet temperature on the failed engine dropping, engine RPM on the operating engine increasing, dropping of main rotor RPM, and emergency power left or right engine illuminating depending on weight and altitude. Your first steps are adjust collective to maintain a rotor RPM of not lower than 92% and not higher than 103%. Stabilize your helicopter's flight path with some left rudder. Establish an appropriate speed. For level flight, 120 km per hour is recommended, as this is the speed with the lowest power demand on the remaining engine. For a glide, keep 60 to 70 km per hour as a minimum. On the MI8 MTV2 with the electronic engine governor, EEG in normal operation, the remaining engine power setting will automatically be increased all the way up to emergency power depending on the helicopter weight. If the EEG fails, manually pull the engine condition lever full up. Once the helicopter is under control, rotor RPM and speed in the green, it's time for a quick tactical decision. Is there an airfield or a suitable landing spot near? If yes, it may be a good idea to start a shallow turn towards it. Turn with a bank of 15 degrees maximum in a single engine condition. In a heavy, hot and high scenario, you might be forced to use power settings higher than max continuous to maintain altitude. Operating the engine at emergency takeoff power for more than 6 minutes will reduce service life. It is however possible to do so for up to 1 hour. In most cases however, you will be able to maintain horizontal flight with max continuous power on the remaining engine. On the EPR gauge, that's the H or Russian N indication. Having lost redundancy, an engine failure may be an emergency, depending on the overall situation. Land as soon as practicable or as soon as possible in the worst case and inform ATC as well as your flight. Pan 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 92051, engine failure, continuing for precautionary landing in the field north of Krasnaya Batarya. Stand by. Take a close look at your engine parameters to identify the failed engine and shut it down. Take your time here. You don't want to accidentally shut down the remaining running engine and be forced to perform an auto rotation. The engine RPM gauge on the MA8 may be a bit hard to read. The arrows do not say L for left and R for right engine as on the rest of the instruments. It's just one and two, one being the left to the right engine. I wonder what the comrades had in mind designing it back then. But then again, Soviet cockpit philosophy is a topic on its own. So you'll be better off identifying the failed engine by also checking EPR, turbine inlet temperature and oil pressure indications. Once identified, shut down the failed engine. Close its fuel shutoff lever and fuel fire valve. Working in a crew, this action is commanded to the flight engineer. Turn off the particle separators and anti-ice to increase available power on the remaining engine. Jettison any external stores. If you're flying with an external load, consider emergency releasing it. Once you have found a suitable place to land, start your gliding descent. 
Maintain 20 km per hour higher than your present height, down to 40 meters. So at a radio height of 60 meters, you'll aim for a speed of 80 km per hour. At 40 meters height, reduce speed by raising the helicopter's nose. At 5 meters height, establish landing attitude, raise the collective and add some right pedal for a soft, rolling landing at about 30 km per hour. Once you have landed, smoothly lower the collective and add some forward cyclic deflection to prevent the main rotor blades from striking the tail boom. Applying wheel brakes, your landing roll will be as short as 5 to 20 meters. Weights higher than 12,000 kilograms. Aim for a speed of 60 to 70 kilometers per hour until reaching 5 to 10 meters height. And land at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. Should your engine fail at altitudes higher than 100 meters, this will help you to survive rather effectively. At altitudes lower than 100 meters, the procedure is mostly the same. However, if your speed is lower than 80 kilometers per hour at the moment of engine failure, you won't have any altitude to trade for speed. Unable to reach 120 km per hour to establish level flight, you have to quickly bring your helicopter into a stable glide at 40 to 60 km per hour and land as described earlier. This concludes another MIA training video. Would you like to see a specific MIA topic covered in an upcoming video? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.